All right, guys, so as you can see here, it's torn back apart. Got it back in the shop. So let me let you know what we got going here. So I got started on removing all the front end stuff and getting it all prepped for the front diff to go back in it. So that's coming. I have the fuel pump out of it and I disassembled the entire thing. I've got the injectors out, plugs, all of it. And that is because um, when I checked the fuel pressure, it was leaking down as soon as the pump you know would stop running it would start leaking down a lot so that's either the pressure regulator which is right here and from what i understand of these units uh supposed to have on this model the s model i think they're supposed to have upwards to like 60 psi the older models need like around 40 something between 40 and 50 psi to run right but as you can see, I've got everything removed. I am going to go ahead and take this valve cover off and see what's going on in there with all that noise. Um, hopefully it's just a loose rocker arm or something. We'll get into that and figure that out. I did do a compression check, and when I took the plugs out, um, I noticed this plug was very uh, black. Like it had been burning more fuel than it should. This one looked good. Compression was good on both cylinders above 90 psi So the motor seems to be healthy and it didn't even leak down uh, at all really when I let it sit there for a good couple minutes Never leaked down any on either cylinder. So Yeah, guys trying to get this uh, these bugs worked out Want to get a little footage for you um, And also before it all goes back together. I'll show you this quick and simple easy snorkel uh uh, kid I did I ended up redoing the the snorkels over there so we'll get into that but right now like I said I'm tearing this apart I'm gonna clean the pump and everything in here put it all back together uh, and then I'm gonna clean the injectors and do an injector cleaning and hopefully I'm hoping that takes care of the running issue uh, that it's having as of right now I did notice it was missing a part it was missing this little rubber boot here, which is supposed to keep the pump pressed up against up in here. So it may have been losing pressure at the pump itself because that wasn't in there. I don't know yet. So all I can do is put it all back together, throw it in there, and see what you do. So I'll come back whenever I figure out or get it all back installed and let you know if that fixed the issue or not. All right, guys. So I've got it torn back apart. I've got the valve cover off. Um, so right here on this cylinder, if you can see, we have a whole lot of slack here in between where for the push rod. I'm thinking that that lifter in there has collapsed. All the other ones, we're at CDC right now. All the other ones feel all the same other than this one. So I'm thinking that's where that sputter's coming from at full throttle. It's not opening the valve all the way or keeping it open long enough to also to suck in air. So we're going to have to take the head off and I'm just going to go ahead and redo the whole head. So I'm going to order some lifters, gasket set, everything to do this head and get it, uh, get it right. So I wanted to show you all that, figure that out. I did already go back through though and go through the injectors and clean them and the pump that's back in and uh, I had to put a rubber piece in the bottom of the pump that was missing. Whoever installed that quantum pump that's in there didn't put it in there and I think it wasn't holding because it wasn't there it wasn't holding the uh, pump up against where it seats up in there. So we were losing pressure before now we're not. So, got to deal with the top end, and once I get all those parts in, I will go ahead and tear all this up and rebuild everything. But, yep, so, you know, it's just how it goes, but I don't want to drive it uh, or run it right now knowing that. I don't want anything else to break in there. So, we'll come back whenever we get to doing whatever else we're going to do on here, which could be the diff. I'm sure Justin, I think is coming tomorrow. 
to help me with that. So we will be welding up this, getting it ready for the front diff and the drive shaft and axles and stuff tomorrow. All right, guys, about to get back to work. All right, so check out the front where the diff is going to go. It's all painted up, ready to rock. So this was like a big hole down in the middle. We just put a plate in there, welded it all up. So got no more gap. So yeah, later on we will have to cut a hole for the drain plug for the diff. Um, Cause yeah, I just covered it up. But anyway, not a huge deal. We want to get it in there and working. So that's the plan. The drive shaft is already in. So I will grease up the ends, stick them in and just start getting the diff in there and snugging it all up. And then I'll start putting on the suspension. All right, so after putting it all together, it's looking like these are brand new cheap axles he got. And they are overextended like no other when it's, you know, sitting on a jack stand. I can't even turn the hubs. It's locked up. And it looks like this one's kind of like pulling out a little bit. I'm going to put it on the tire on the tires and set it down under its own weight and see if it'll turn then and if not we'll have to figure something out so i'm gonna put the tires on and see what happens all right guys so the tires are back on and under its own weight it does roll let me show you so it's rolling it's not binding up anymore with the axle hopefully after they break in uh it'll be able to you know drop its whole suspension if not it'll just break them and we'll just have to upgrade uh the gaps here are better and they're more straight up and down so they should be okay for right now we'll see what happens if it breaks it breaks and we'll have to get some better axles for it but now that that's all done the full wheel drive we're gonna address the motor i'm gonna order some uh hydraulic lifters so we can get this is all taken care of, but I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the whole head while I'm at it. New seals, gaskets, all that good stuff. I've drained the coolant. It's ready just to come off. I need to just loosen it up and take it off. So let me show you here. Got everything on for the full wheel drive. Drive shafts on. Not much slack there. I greased everything up really good before I installed it. And over in here, I have a bolt holding it. An Allen bolt I use to hold it front diff uh instead of putting a pin in there because i hate pushing that or punching that pin out of there can't stand it so if you ever got to remove that put a bolt in it it'll make your life way easier i promise when you have to remove it again so everything's tight bolted down the diffs in there good everything's good to go so like i said i'm gonna order those parts and get everything start coming in for the motor stuff and we'll go from there so i'll come back whenever we get into that all right guys so about to remove the head before i do i labeled everything so i would definitely recommend that so got all my bolts labeled valves labeled rocker arms everything's labeled uh just show you real quick what you got to remove also to get this out you got to take the thermostat housing off uh temp sensor and the hose right below it disconnect all that you know it's got to look like this basically and then get all your bolts loose and then you should be able just to pop it up and then we're going to set it over here on the table and then the rocker arms we're going to have laid out right here and we're going to see if number three is shorter than the rest right now all right so the head's off here's the underside they don't look too bad so we'll clean all that up get that old gasket off and take the valves out and we'll clean them all up change the seals let's see over here the lifters are still in it well that's my cue to take them out all right guys here are the lifters out of the motor and uh i don't know if you can tell but this one is definitely shorter than the rest and uh the bottom of it is not flat anymore it's chipped up here and it also has a curvature to it you can see it this way uh, See how it's all ate up? So I'm hoping the cam that's riding on the lobe is not damaged. I've looked and I don't see any, but 
that doesn't mean it's not. So I hope I don't have to change the can. Oh, that would suck. But anyway, so yeah, that one's definitely shorter. Um, we'll order some, put them in, and we'll go from there. And hopefully it will fix. Hopefully this one was just collapsed or messed up. And that's what caused this. And it's not something further down. So once I get those, we will throw them in. And uh, I'll also clean up everything here with the head, get it all ready to go. And we'll come back whenever... I put them in and we'll see what happens. So come back then. All right, guys, I got the head fully disassembled. All the valves are out and everything. Got it ready to get cleaned. So I'll go get it cleaned up. Here's all the valves, exhaust, intake, intake for that uh, bad lifter valve. And then this is the exhaust uh, one for that. Here's that lifter once again. How it's all curved and chipped up. That's very bad. Not good. I'll have to look at that uh, cam lobe and make sure it's not all damaged. And if it is, oh no, we got to change the cam. These are all good and flat like they're supposed to be. So all those were fine. So, but whenever I get it all cleaned up and some other things figured out, I'll come back.